Hello, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Today I want to talk about The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. If you've checked out any of my earlier videos, um, you might know that this is one of the books that I really wanted to read this month um, and partly uh, I, I knew I would definitely accomplish that because I was also reading it for two different book clubs. So this morning, which is Sunday, October 18th, um, I finally had one of my book club discussions, and so I'm ready to, to make my video about this. I actually finished it um, last Monday, so almost a week ago now, and um, if you stop watching this video right now, here's maybe all you need to know, which is I love this book so much. I finished it at 11 p.m. on a Monday night, and I could not go to sleep until 2 a.m. because I was so excited about it and so wired from having enjoyed it so much. So, um, excellent book, amazing book. Go read it. Um, end of story. No. Um, so, okay, so this is, uh, this is really kind of my first review video for, uh, kind of a substantive, a uh, really substantive book, um, because I've only reviewed a graphic novel, or not graphic, I don't know, a graphic essay, uh, book before this. Um, so when I watch booktube reviews, I don't really like spoiler-free reviews because <clears throat> you can't really, like, you can't really dig into a book if you're doing it spoiler-free. I don't know. So I'm going to, just quickly talk about some spoiler-free stuff about this book, um, and then I'll do a few seconds break to let anybody who watches this and doesn't want to hear spoilers, hasn't read it yet, <clears throat> go ahead and close the video, and then I'll keep going with some of what I thought about the book that um, I think would be a lot harder to do uh, if you're really trying not to give away anything about the end. So, um, jumping in without spoilers, um, so I did say this is a fantastic book, like everything N.K. Jemisin does, the writing is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's lyrical, it's detailed without being an insanely long book. I mean, this is a thick book, but it's not a Brandon Sanderson, you know, tome. Um, I was going to get a total page count here. It's just over 400 pages, so it is long, but it's not insanely long, and she accomplishes so much so well in such a short period of time. And this book in particular, the character descriptions and the character development is phenomenal. Um, so actually, I should way back up. So for those who aren't familiar with The City We Became, this is urban fantasy set in our modern world. <clears throat> um, and then our world gets bent, um, which is the premise of the book. And so in this book, um, cities have souls and cities are born and come to life. Um, and they get those souls over the process of hundreds or thousands of years as a city really takes on a personality of its own, as all of the people who move to that city um, really give it a life and voice. And so in this book, this book is about the city of New York in 2020 really being born. It's finally reached that kind of critical weight of um, having culture and story about it um, and is being born. And so as a city is born, it, um, it acquires an avatar, um, a person who, who really embodies the city and can speak for it and fight for it. Um, and in our world, as cities are born, they are attacked by something else. And so the book is um, the new baby New York avatars um, defending the city from this attack. And as we come to realize through the book, the, the specific ways that New York is being attacked by this enemy differ from the process that has happened with all of our other great cities. Um, so Sao Paulo and Hong Kong are kind of mentors um, of New York as the New York avatars go through this process. Um, and New York is also unique because it's one of the few cities where instead of just one avatar, uh, kind of one personality, <clears throat> um, there are actually six total, and so the book is kind of the, the journey of each of these avatars uh, being born and coming to life as an avatar. You know, they're just everyday people, and then they're an avatar. Um, and so one of the really great things, going back to my point about uh, Jemison just um, packing so much talented writing and character development into such a short space, is she has these five characters that represent New York, and so she has to make that connection very strongly, and she has to flesh out how the identity of each of the boroughs of New York is reflected in this person. So there's a lot of identity development, a lot of description um, that she accomplishes very quickly and masterfully. And um, those identities are something that the book has gotten a lot of love for because we've got queer representation, we've got representation across a variety of ethnicities and races, we've got indigenous representation. And Jemison, um, as far as as far as I can read as a white woman, um, has done has done all of that very well. Um, in this book. One of the things that I really appreciate is um, her characters to me don't feel like they're they're tokenizing, like they are fully fleshed people 
um, that I feel like I know. They're not just they're not just known for you know their identity. Their identities are things that um, clearly uh, frame their experiences and frame their viewpoints around the world. But they are wholly wholly fleshed characters, um, despite uh, despite the length of the book. Um, so I really enjoy that aspect um, of it. Another thing I really like, and I think a lot of people really like is um, the the Lovecraft influences that come into here. So um, so she was influenced by Lovecraft, the the aspects of the enemy that's attacking this baby city, the baby the baby avatars of New York um, is very kind of Lovecraftian horror, uh, but in my opinion done better. Um, not a huge fan of Lovecraft here, I just don't find him very creepy, and uh, I also was an adult before I read any of his stuff and so had already heard everything about him being a racist bigot, and I just don't feel like supporting authors like that. So um, I like that N.K. Jemisin kind of gave a nod to that history um, and, and, you know, acknowledge that he can be an influence in people's development as a sci-fi and fantasy uh, fan and reader and writer. Um, but then we can have this absolutely compelling 21st century take on, uh, on race and identity in America, um, along with Lovecraftian horror. So those are perhaps some of the things that I can talk about without spoilers that I really liked. Um, so now we will pause for a few seconds, and uh, if you don't want to know any more, go away. Um, if you've already read the book and want to talk about it more, please hang out and I'll see you, uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, here I am back to talk about some plot-driven things that I really liked about this book. Um, so one thing I almost didn't like was the development of Island as the Staten Island borough and as, um, as Island kind of got uh, increasingly paranoid and fed up um, and, uh, you know, was kind of persuaded by the woman in white, uh, I, uh, I was a little thinking like, okay, here we go, a stereotype, Staten Island is like not going to band together with the rest of New York when everything is on the line, right? So I, I was almost... I was almost disappointed. Like I thought that would be a very disappointing route to take. And of course it kind of does go that route. Um, but there's the excellent twist at the end where Vanessa is kind of reborn at the very end in the crucial moment as Jersey City becoming a real city and becoming part of New York. And the point Jemison was making was that cities are defined by the people who believe that they belong in the city and who identify with the city and not necessarily the exact geography. Um, and so Staten Island can be part of New York, but um, maybe we've also re reached a point in contemporary society where Jersey City is part of New York because Jersey City claims some identity with New York. Um, <clears throat> and so I thought that was a really cool way of um, <clears throat> kind of playing into part of New York identity where Staten Island can be seen as something very separate, um, but then twisting it at the end uh, to be not, yeah, just kind of not as much expected and um, making this much deeper deeper point about belonging than um, if she just had Staten Island leave the fold. I think it would have just played into stereotypes. Um, whereas adding Jersey City and, you know, really kind of uh, made the point about belonging and identity um, as a community and as a city. So I thought that was really cool. So I'm actually, I'm going through my notes as well. Um, <laughs> the other really interesting thing to me was well, so just in general, how much this book is kind of an anthem of 2020. I mean, we have New York under attack from something that's behaving very much like a pathogen or a disease, right? Um, we've got these white tendrils kind of taking over people in a way um, and influencing them. And so that's, uh, to me, very analogous of coronavirus. Um, but then we also have a lot of the racial and ethnic issues that are really uh, blowing up in the U.S. right now are, are key pieces of this book. Um, and I, I've been going back and forth about the, the thread about the um, kind of the white, the white supremacist men who come into Branca's art center and are stirring up trouble. And then later in the book, there's uh, kind of an impromptu demonstration of these white supremacists that has shut down part of the city. Um, and in the book, it's coded as part of the attacks of the, the woman in white or the white, the white woman. I, I forget exactly which phraseology uh, Jemison uses, but the enemy. Um, has kind of tapped into the existing um, inclinations of people. And so in this case, you know, she's, tap she's tapping into the existing uh, negative, hateful inclinations of people to use them as weapons against the New York avatars or end inconveniences. And so she's using these white supremacists in that way. Um, 
And at first, so my, my first emotional reading of that was that I really liked that because it kind of spoke to my own confusion in 2020 about like, where do these white supremacists come from? Which is an ignorant way of thinking about it because they've been there all along and it's just now we have a horrible political system. Um, we've always had a horrible political system. We have now horrible political figures who are giving them voice, right? Um, so at first I liked that, but then I wondered if maybe it was trivializing it. Um, but then somebody in my book club made this really great point of, um, like maybe yes in a way, but then we also have the character of Staten Island. We have Island who is racist, um, you know, actively overtly so, and is developed as, um, kind of a sympathetic character. I mean, she sucks, but, you, but like you can see why she comes from an abusive household. She comes from... A specific subculture um, and so so I think we are expected to sympathize with that a little bit and then to me a powerful parallel is she's got this this woman coming in you know and this alien multi universal multi-dimensional woman right who's very nice to her um, and that just kind of mirrored US politics for me right now because Island feels kind of heard and supported personally and turns a blind eye to all of the horrible stuff that this woman this alien whatever monster um, in the guise of this woman is uh is doing to other people with with who look and act differently than island um and so i thought that was a little bit more of a nuanced nuanced take on kind of the white supremacy threads that are woven through this book and i'm really really curious to see what happens um with island in future books. I mean, I don't even know if New York will be. I assume it'll still be kind of the focus for the next book, but really curious to hear what happens um, kind of with Aylin and her identity and who she's identifying with and who she feels supported by um, in that. And, uh, and now that I've talked about the white supremacy piece, I just, I like, I have to play. I mean, my favorite part about this book, um, and I think a lot of other people who've reviewed this book have really captured it excellently. I mean, we have our five, actually our six, sorry, not our five, because Island sucks, but um, the all, the other avatars, so it's the four other Boros and the Boros, and then there's uh, the New York avatar that really embodies the whole conglomeration of New York. Um, and they all come from lineages of people who have had to fight and suffer for their right to belong in New York City and in the U.S. And coming from that history of fighting, they just show up ready to go when the city is under threat. And, and so, in that sense, it's it's no surprise um, that these people are the ones that were kind of chosen, rose to the top to be the avatars and the defenders of New York because they're the people who have been fighting and are just ready to go at it, right? And so I think there's there's just something kind of so powerful in, um, I mean, Jemison is giving that power, you know, right? She's 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 uh, to me kind of leaving behind words like marginalized and words like oppressed, and it's. It's people claiming power um, and making the conscious choice to do so um, and doing it without apology or anything. I mean, I just I just loved it. Um, and then there's all kinds of, of metaphor in the book about how um, how they can how they use weapons and what become weapons in their fight for the struggle of New York. And it's all very uh, it's all very rooted in kind of identity and belonging. Um, and then we get kind of metaphorical weapons, you know, it for Manhattan, like a credit card is imbued with magical energy or get yeah, a debit card, I don't know. And uh, with the um, the avatar of Brooklyn, you know, it's music, it's rap and hip hop. Um, so really tying into uh, kind of those histories and community of, um, of all these parts of New York. So um, yeah, I mean, I could I could keep going forever. I have I have lots of notes that I haven't even gotten all the way through, but this is already turning into a long video. So I'm just so excited to see where this is going with the rest of the trilogy. Um, if you've watched this video and you've read The City We Became and have any response to anything that I've said, or uh, there are plenty of really cool things to talk about that I didn't bring up, you know, let me know in the comments. Um, if you've reviewed it yourself, please definitely give me a link. I checked out a couple of booktuber um, reviews of The City We Became before. I, uh, before I did my book club and before I did this video, so I'll put those links, um, in the comments below, but I'd love to see what more people thought about it. This book is, like, the more, you know, on one level, it's, it's kind of a simple, like, scrappy, the good guys fighting the bad guys, right, story, but, um, there's just so much more, and it's a book that I'm definitely gonna have to reread again and again, um, to pick up on everything, uh, everything that's going on, especially with, uh, with the characters. Um, so I'm excited to do that, so. Anyway, it's about community, it's about identity, it's about belonging, it's about claiming that you belong and not letting other people tell you you don't. Um, 
and I just really loved this book. So please check out the reviews that I'll link in the comment in the, my description below. Let me know what you thought about this book. Let me know if you're excited to read it. Um, I'd love to keep talking about it. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.